Skulk, an unusual block and block family with unsettling implications. As for what exactly it is, I believe that Skulk, or more specifically the Skulk block, is moss that was mutated or otherwise changed by interdimensional energy emitted from end portals. Since the particles present in end portals are predominantly cyan, I believe that the presence of the color cyan in certain items indicates that they are somehow connected to the interdimensional energy present in those end portals. This includes such things as warped fungi, the fog in soul sand valleys, as well as fire from soul sand and soul soil. With its glowing cyan dots on a dark background, the Skulk block bears some resemblance to an end portal, but the connections between the end and the deep dark go further than that. While the 1.19 update added the deep dark biome, it also changed one of Minecraft's music tracks to play exclusively in that biome, Ancestry. I believe this is significant because Ancestry was originally added in the 1.18 update. While it did sound very different from the other songs added in the Caves and Cliffs update, it did play on the title screen and didn't sit in the game files unused. However, once 1.19 was released, Ancestry no longer played on the title screen and only played in the deep dark. But what does Ancestry have to do with the end? I have seen some assert that the title itself is a reference to what the community frequently refers to as the Ancient Builders, beings the community believes built many of the structures found in Minecraft, and frequently associates with the End Dimension in one way or another. I don't necessarily disagree with this argument, but I think the content of the song itself is far more telling than the title. The track features various audio distortions like crackling, popping, and ringing which varies in intensity throughout the track. Likewise, the track The End, which plays exclusively in the End Dimension, features crackling, popping, and ringing which varies in intensity throughout the track. If you haven't already listened to those two tracks before, I recommend that you do. But if that's not enough to convince you of the link between the Deep Dark and The End, then I ask you to consider Chiseled Deep Slate. Chiseled Deep Slate can be found in ancient cities, which are always within a deep dark biome. While I can understand why many associate the patterns on Chiseled Deep Slate with the hostile mob that was also added in 1.19 with the deep dark, I still believe that it more closely resembles a shulker, a mob which generates exclusively in the end. But while we're on the subject of the ancient cities, there's something else present in them that connects them to another dimension, Soul Sand. What does that have to do with Skulk? The blocks of soul sand below the large structure in the middle of the ancient city are all lit on fire, and those flames just so happen to be cyan in color. You can also find soul lanterns, which would be made from either soul sand or soul soil in other parts of the city. Currently, soul sand and soil can otherwise only be found in the nether, mostly in soul sand valleys. As I've outlined in a previous video, I believe the cyan flames as well as the cyan fog in soul sand valleys indicate the area was thoroughly contaminated with interdimensional energy. While I'm not convinced that soul lanterns and soul sand emit dangerous amounts of interdimensional energy by themselves, the presence of these items in the ancient cities leads me to believe that whoever lived in these cities wasn't concerned about the long-term effects such energy exposure could cause, or at the very least, they viewed the potential benefits from using interdimensional energy as greater than the risks. Due to the apparent interdimensional energy contamination in the Nether, I believe that, at least for a time, the ancient builders used bedrock portals similar to those found in the End to travel directly between the End and the Nether. The most likely locations appear to be where there is uneven bedrock at both the top and bottom of the Nether. Like the Nether, the Overworld has uneven bedrock at the bottom of the world, which just so happens to be where the Deep Dark and ancient cities can be found. If the ancient builders were using bedrock portals in the nether similar to the portals found in the end, then it's reasonable to conclude that the uneven bedrock at the bottom of the overworld means the builders were doing the exact same thing there. And if using bedrock portals in the nether resulted in interdimensional energy contaminating the warped fungi and soul sand valleys, then it's also reasonable to conclude that the bedrock portals in the overworld could have resulted in contaminating parts of the overworld, creating the deep dark. But in the nether, the Soul Sand Valley and Warped Forest Biomes cover the entire vertical span of the Nether, 
while the deep dark only occurs at the bottom of the world. There are two main factors that explain this. One, while the nether has uneven bedrock at both the bottom and top of the world, there is only bedrock at the bottom of the overworld. Two, both the deep slate and stone of the overworld have a much higher blast resistance and take longer to mine than the netherrack of the nether. It's reasonable to think that deep slate and stone are thus more dense than netherrack, and could help to better insulate the overworld from the interdimensional energy contamination, keeping it towards the bottom of the world and away from the life on the surface. So then, that explains how there could still be a thriving ecosystem in the overworld, while the food chain in the nether is drastically disrupted. But all of that still doesn't explain the existence of Skulk until we consider another piece of the puzzle, moss. While moss can be found in shipwreck chests or purchased from a wandering trader, the most reliable way to find it is to look for a lush cave. While lush caves can generate higher up in the world than the deep dark, they can also generate down to the depths of the deep slate layer of the overworld. And the way that moss grows is very different from most plants. While most plants will either grow taller or otherwise change in appearance, the way that moss grows is by spreading and replacing certain other blocks. Does that sound familiar? Skulk spreads in the same way. And as far as I can tell, Skulk is able to spread and replace any block that moss can, as well as some that moss can't like gravel and sand. I know that I'm not the first person to connect Skulk with moss, but in case you haven't already heard the argument for how they're related, consider these additional points. 1. They both spread from a form of death or decay, whether that's bone meal obtained from bones or a composter, or from the XP dropped by a dying mob. 2. They can both be broken with any tool, but the hoe specifically is the best tool for the job. 3. They both have consistent items that generate from spreading. Spreading moss produces moss, moss carpet, grass, tall grass, azalea, and flowering azalea. Spreading skulk yields skulk, skulk vein, skulk sensors, and skulk shriekers. Granted, there are some differences, like the fact that moss spreads from a moss block, while skulk spreads from a catalyst instead of a skulk block. And moss is clearly green, while skulk is either dark blue or black with cyan dots. But I believe those could be a result of mutation from the interdimensional energy contamination. After all, if interdimensional energy could change nether fungi from red to cyan, and cause striders to only be comfortable with additional heat from lava, why couldn't it have also altered the way moss looked and spread once it was mutated into skulk? But there's still something missing. If Skulk could no longer spread from just the normal Skulk block and needed the specialized catalyst instead, how did that arise? The only way to gain catalysts is to defeat the hostile mob which is summoned by the activation of Skulk Shriekers, and those also cannot be generated without a Skulk catalyst. Skulk veins, which appear to be involved in spreading Skulk, also only appear once a catalyst has been activated. The remaining block in the Skulk family is the final piece to this puzzle, the Skulk Sensor. Unlike the rest of the Skulk blocks, the Skulk Sensor seems to have been integrated into the ancient city well before its apparent abandonment. Sensors can be found on redstone lamps to activate them, as well as in the hidden redstone room below the large structure in the center of the ancient city. Additionally, when activated, the sensor emits particles, which start out blue but then transition to red. The red particles just so happen to also resemble the particles on redstone. I've already established that I believe the ancient builders who would presumably be responsible for the existence of the ancient city had greater crafting ability than the modern Minecraft player. While there is no way for us to craft a Skulk sensor from Skulk and Redstone, would that have been possible for the ancient builders? If so, would they have looked for even more efficient ways to generate these useful redstone tools, using Skulk, Bones, and who knows what else, to craft the catalysts which could generate additional Skulk sensors, as well as other items which they thought would be beneficial? I believe so. Admittedly, this explanation relies heavily on the Skulk Sensor's particles resembling those from Redstone, but it does take care of the chicken or egg problem we have with figuring out whether Skulk or the Catalyst came first. While my proposed explanation does address why Skulk exists, as well as why it exists only at the bottom of the overworld, I haven't really addressed why there's so much in the ancient cities, or why ancient cities are only found in the deep dark. Incidentally, this may be another point in favor of arguing that Skulk sensors and catalysts are, at least to a degree, artificial. 
Others in the community have already asserted that the fact that all ancient cities are found within deep dark biomes indicates that the cities were intentionally built so that the ancient builders had easy access to the deep dark biome. If they were performing experiments on the Skulk, that would make sense. But what went wrong? Why are the cities now all abandoned? Since the Skulk Block family's introduction, Mojang hasn't shied away from the fact that the presence of these blocks is an indication that many mobs died. That vast patches of Skulk can be found in ancient cities, replacing parts of the structure where there are presently no residents, is also disconcerting. Unsurprisingly, many Minecraft players appear to agree that the prevalence of Skulk in the Deep Dark and ancient cities is evidence that some sort of war happened long before the player entered the world. While I agree that this is a likely possibility, especially given the missing and damaged parts of structures that don't appear to be damaged by Skulk, but more likely explosions of some sort, I have yet to find a theory that lists all the parties I believe were involved in said conflict. But that is a topic I shall have to address at another time. Of course, this begs the question, is everything that happens to be a shade of cyan somehow connected with interdimensional energy? Not necessarily, but I think it's important to be alert to the color when considering blocks and items that exhibit unusual properties. And while it doesn't seem that Skulk has drastically affected the overworld's ecosystem, there's another unusual block which is cyan, found primarily at the bottom of the overworld, and could have had more impact on that dimension's surface than we realize. As unsettling as the screeches and bone-like sounds from the Skulk family of blocks are, I believe that the implications arising from Diamond Ore's existence might be even more disturbing. Once I have the video about Diamond Door ready, I'll add it to this end screen. Until next time, take care.